Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Most of y'all know that I've done a lot of solar generator reviews, and because I've done so many, I get emails almost daily from different solar generator companies wanting me to take a look at their stuff. Chances are, if you've heard of them, they've emailed me. And since I don't want my channel to become nothing but solar generator reviews, I'm pretty selective when it comes to who I work with, but recently I got an email from Blue Eddy asking me to take a look at their new hands-free backpack solar generator, and this got my attention for two reasons. First, Blue Eddy's an established company, and then second, the hands-free is unique and it's pretty innovative. While I've done reviews on power stations of all different sizes, I've never had the opportunity to look at one that was built from the ground up with portability in mind. So today we're going to take a look at Blue Eddy's new Hands-Free 2, going over its specs, features, and how different folks could use it. But before we get started, I would like to thank Blue Eddy for sending this to us and for sponsoring today's video. The Hands-Free, in a nutshell, is a solar generator designed to fit inside of a backpack. Until now, if you wanted a solar power option that could do that, you'd be stuck with something like this. A small set of solar panels paired with a couple of USB battery banks, and that works okay for powering little things, but it's pretty limited. The hands-free, on the other hand, will give you a much larger capacity, allow you to charge more devices, along with the ability to collect a lot more solar energy. The one that I have, the Hands-Free 2, is the larger model of the series and comes with a 512 watt hour power station and a 60 liter backpack. You can also purchase the power station by itself if you're wanting a low profile power station for home use and it would work really well for that. It has a small form factor but it still packs a pretty good punch. Then you can add a 120 watt solar panel which would turn it into a full solar generator. If you're wanting something smaller, you can get the Hands-Free 1 which comes with a 268 watt hour capacity and a 42 liter backpack. But getting into specs, the Hands-Free uses LFP or lithium iron phosphate batteries that can last 4,000 charge cycles before degrading to 80% of their original capacity. This means that you should be able to get several years of use out of this before you start noticing a decline in performance. It is a good idea though to use it and recharge it to 80% every three to six months that'll help keep the batteries in good shape because you don't want batteries to sit around maxed out or too low for an extended period of time. The Hands-Free 2 is rated for up to 700 watts of output, which is more than enough to handle devices you'd normally run with a power station of this size. You'll be able to charge cameras, cell phones, and other small electronics without any trouble at all. And you can even run some larger things like air compressors and 12 volt refrigerators. And since the hands-free can provide pass-through power, you should be able to keep portable fridges running both day and night. You can connect panels to it during the day and have plenty of juice in your power station to keep that fridge running all night. So if you like to camp but still want to have all of your amenities, then this is a very good option for that. Bluetti's running a glamp this fall with Bluetti promotion, so if you think you'd like to check out the Hands-Free 2 or any of their other backup power options, then be sure to visit their website using the link in the description below and also use these codes. Then the Hands-Free 2 can also provide up to 1200 watts of lifting power in Herculean mode. This is useful for running things like hair dryers that normally require more than 700 watts. You won't be running them at full power, but you'll still be able to use them. I've used functions similar to this on other devices as well, and they work best with simple devices that use things like heating elements or spinning motors. Don't expect to run more complicated things that use sensitive components like, say, microwaves or refrigerators. But with a setup like this, that's not really your goal anyway. When it comes to ports, the Hands-Free 2 has one AC outlet, two USB-A ports, and two USB-C ports, so you'll be able to power or charge up to five devices simultaneously. You'll be able to run something like an air mattress pump at the same time as you're charging flashlights, LED lanterns, and radios, and all the outlets can be accessed without taking the power station out of the backpack. All you need to do is unzip the U-shaped side compartment and your outputs and controls are all right there. The front of the device has the display, the main power button, output on and off buttons, USB ports, and a 12 volt input for solar or car charging. Then the AC outlets on the other side along with the input for the wall charging cable. To use the hands-free 2, just turn the power station on, 
turn on the outputs you're wanting to use, and plug in your devices. Both side compartments are also ventilated, which will reduce the chances of the power station overheating while in use, and the backpack has loops that'll keep your side compartments open for as long as you want. When charging the hands-free 2 from a standard wall outlet, it can go from 0 to 80% in 45 minutes and 0 to 100% in 1.3 hours, which is pretty good when you compare it to other power stations. If you're using a 350 watt solar panel, it can go from 0 to 100% in 2 hours. All you need to do is set up your panels, connect them to the included solar charging cable, and then plug that cable into the front of the power station. The hands-free uses very efficient MPPT controllers to make that process as quick as possible, but it is important to note that if you're using the 120 watt panel you'd get with the hands-free 2 as part of the set, it's going to take longer than two hours to charge it since you're using a smaller panel. That's just how that works. Then you can also recharge it from your car in around 5.8 hours if you're using a 12 volt outlet. However, that cable will need to be purchased separately. For home use, you can also use the hands-free 2 as a UPS or uninterruptible power supply. If you have electronics plugged into it, the hands-free can switch from AC power to its batteries in less than 20 milliseconds, and the power station comes with a five-year warranty. Now, looking at the backpack, from the outside, it looks like a regular hiking or travel pack with the exception of the Blue Eddy logo on the front. It has straps and Molly-style attachment points for securing things like sleeping mats or blankets, along with some water bottle compartments on the side. Bottles like my Grail Ultra Press or 27 ounce clean canteen fit inside perfectly. There's also three smaller compartments on the front of the bag that you can use for storing small odds and ends, and the bottom compartment even has a few dividers for additional organization. Then the backpack has two main compartments. The first one is a large open compartment for holding clothes, and it has a few smaller sections for holding things like socks and toiletries. The second compartment has multiple dividers that you can customize to fit different pieces of gear. It was mainly designed for photography equipment, but it also works well for holding radios, LED lanterns, flashlights, and other small electronics that you'd want to have with you while you're away from home. Then the last compartment is what holds the hands-free 2 power station, along with some room for cord storage, and I really like the way that everything is divided up. If you're needing access to something like a first aid kit, it's right there. Then if you're needing a radio or some other piece of equipment, you don't have to go rummaging through all of your clothes just to get to that. Everything's in its own spot, which is really nice. If you're a photographer and just need something to carry your equipment, then you can use the zipper to compress the other large compartment to make the bag more compact. Then the straps on the bag are pretty decent. They remind me a lot of what's on my Eagle Creek travel bag that I've had for around 17 years or so, and they're pretty comfortable. As long as you don't overload the pack, which is the temptation with larger bags like this, then you should be fine. I actually like the waist strap on this bag a little better than the one on my Eagle Creek. Its padding is softer, and it also has a storage compartment on each side. Then if you're into photography or just like doing home movies, there is a spot here on the shoulder strap where you can mount an action camera. Now as far as real world applications are concerned, I think the hands-free was designed originally for people like myself and my wife. I do YouTube, obviously, and then she has a photography business. If we need to go somewhere off grid to get shots, having a backup power option is nice, and since it's incorporated into a backpack, it also gives us room to store most of our gear. We could even attach our tripods to the webbing on the front of the pack if we wanted to. So it's a great option for folks who stay out in the field for longer periods of time and who need a way to charge all their devices and also power some creature comforts. Then another group Blue Eddy had in mind when they designed the hands-free was campers. You can use the hands-free to run pretty much any device that you'd want to have with you. And if you get the hands-free with panels, you'll be able to run those devices almost indefinitely. It's ideal for devices with rechargeable batteries, and for others that use traditional AA's or AAA's, you can use the hands-free to top off rechargeable variants of those. Since the bag can also hold clothes, it can serve as both a power source for an entire family and primary luggage for at least one family member. As someone who's used solar generators on camping trips, I can tell you from experience that being able to do that is 
really nice. I've had to lug around other solar generators while on camping trips, and it can be a real big pain if you have to walk a longer distance from your car to your campsite. This is just going to make that process a whole lot easier, and I also like that the generator's safe inside of the backpack rather than floating around loose on the floorboard with a bunch of stuff stacked on top of it. And since this is a prepper channel, some of y'all may be wondering if this could be a good bug out bag. And to be fair, I probably wouldn't use this as my primary bug out bag if I lived on my own or I had a small family. The hands-free two and backpack weigh around 20 pounds altogether, which can be a lot if you're traveling over a long distance totally on foot. Because as a general rule, you want your bug out bag or your hiking backpack to be like 20% of your body weight. So if you weigh like 150 pounds, you want your bag to be around 30 pounds or less. However, if you have a larger family and can spread the designated tech carrier's personal effects between other family members, then it could be doable. Also, if you plan on bugging out by car, then having a complete solar generator packed up with all your other prepper tech items would be very beneficial. Everything would be right there where you need it, and it'd be ready to go. It could kind of be sort of a mobile lights out kit. Preppers could also use the mobile lights out kit concept and keep the entire setup stored in a Faraday cage. That way you'd have all the technology that you'd want to have after a disaster all in one place and also protected from an EMP. You could keep things like rechargeable flashlights and headlamps along with their charging cables in there. And since there's compartments on the front, you could keep your small personal electronics in those for easier access. The tech compartment would work really well for holding other things like, say, LED lanterns, radios, and USB battery banks. My lantern and radios are all USB rechargeable, so I can keep them going with the hands-free too and use the battery banks as satellite power sources that'll also increase how much energy I can store at once. So I think the hands-free too is a really good option for preppers who are wanting a mobile power supply, especially if they already have something larger for powering like their household appliances. Now, if you want to see the kinds of devices that you'd want to protect from an EMP, then click here. Or if you want to see three ways to build a Faraday cage, then click here. Once again, I'd like to thank Blue Eddy for sponsoring us today. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.